Hi everybody, so good to be with y'all today. It's still a little different. We're all at home and it's just a joy to be able to reach out to you through this medium. Thanks for joining with us today at Upward Christian Fellowship. We're thankful for you. We're thankful you're a part of this church family. We're thankful that you're watching today. We start a new series today called Overwhelmed. And this series is going to focus on a huge need in our day, especially through the last several weeks. We're going to talk about your mental health. The Bible has so much to say about our mental health, and we're going to look at the next four weeks at some very great passages in the Bible that address our mental health and help us learn how to manage our mind and our emotions. And I think it's going to be so beneficial to you, so helpful to you. And uh, we just want that. We want it to be a blessing to your families. We know uh, you're in a stressful time at home right now. You may have a large family and you may have already had a fight with your spouse. You may have yelled at the kids already today. You may be in the midst of a situation that's just tough already today. Thanks for watching. We're going to help you today. Uh, you may be alone at home, and, and for those of you who live alone, uh, we, we feel how, how that must feel to you to be quarantined and just to be cut off from friends and family through this time. And we want to speak hope into your lives today. Some of you may be in an unsafe situation right now. You may be struggling because home doesn't really feel like a safe place for you. We want to speak some hope into your life today and uh, over the next four weeks. So thanks for joining us, and it's going to be a great time. Uh, the next uh, little bit here. I want to share a scripture with you today that's, that's really been powerful to me in the, on the subject of mental health. It's from the book of 1 Peter. And I love the Apostle Peter. He was a guy with a big mouth and a guy who was really rough around the edges. But uh, Jesus came into his life and just changed him completely. Uh, this man who was a rough-hewn fisherman, um, you know, he just became such an eloquent, eloquent uh, apostle uh, for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he wrote uh, two books in Scripture. And one of the things I love about the Apostle Peter's writings is he, he encouraged Christians again and again to be proactive in their faith. Peter did not endorse a passive faith, but it was a proactive faith a faith that planned ahead, a faith that was actively engaging the future. And I think it's so important for us to be proactive. And I want to share with you from 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 13. He writes, So prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. I love those things. I see three things in this passage. Peter says, first of all, prepare your minds for action. Then he says, exercise self-control. And then he says, put all your hope in Jesus. Three powerful things that we're going to talk about today. Now, I have a very special guest with me here today. And throughout this series, we're going to be interviewing some experts in the field, as well as bringing biblical truth to you. I am I'm so thrilled today and pleased to have Kristen Martin here. Kristen is a uh, member of Upward Christian Fellowship. She's been here for over a decade, I think we said. A long time Kristen yeah. has been with us. Uh, her and Rob are just great friends and their family. Uh, Kristen is the executive director of Thrive. Mm -hmm. Thrive is an organization, a great organization here in our community that, that serves individuals and families with severe and persistent mental health issues as well as reaching out to those who are dealing with homelessness. Kristen is also a licensed cr clinical social worker. Uh, she's done work in that field for years. Uh, Kristen is an expert in so many ways. Today we're talking specifically about staying sane at home. And Kristen is an expert practitioner of that as well, I promise you. Kristen has a, has a large family. Uh, when I first met her and Rob, it was just her and Rob, but uh, in uh, 2013 they adopted a precious little man named Joe. Uh, Joe is a joy and a bundle of energy. If you ever come to Upward and you see a little kid running through the hallways, that's likely to be Joe. He has boundless energy. We love him so much. But just this year, uh, they have adopted uh, four more children. Wow. Uh, they have now Davin, Danny, Donnie, and Daisy. So in their house, 
if you think you're stressed this morning, just think <laughs> about Kristen. In their house, they have two six-year-olds, two four-year-olds, and a one-year-old. So Kristen is an expert in this area. Welcome, Kristen. We're so Thank glad you. to have you. Yes, our life is chaos sometimes. <laughs> I bet it is. I bet it is. I think you said you had a rough night even last night. Yes. We have Daisy teething right now, so that, that wow. uh, adds to the element for sure. Wow. <laughs> I remember those days well, yes. and I'm glad I'm past those <laughs> days, but you're in it right now. Yes. So I uh, failed to mention as well, Kristen is on our uh, church administrative council. She does a fantastic job helping us lead this church. She, Kristen, you're such a blessing in leadership here, and I want to thank you for that too. Uh, Kristen, uh, I want to talk about uh, what Peter said. The first, the first thing we talked about that he said that was so powerful is he said we could prepare our minds for action. Right. And I just love that so much that he tells us to, to prepare for what's ahead. Uh, we've got uh, at least a few more weeks of quarantine, at least a few more weeks staying at home. What are some things you're seeing that, that we can do to prepare for the rest of this time we have at home? Sure. So the, the best thing to do right now is to have as much structure as possible. Um, and that's if you're living alone or if you do have a large family or have kids. Um, if you normally would get up and go to work and you have a morning routine where you get dressed and do your devotions or spend time with God, you need to still maintain that. So um, everybody gets dressed every morning. Um, I know that it is really easy to just stay in those PJs and stay comfy, um, but it's really important to establish that routine. Um, because otherwise, you know, your body doesn't even know how to handle the fact that you're stuck at home. Um, so those routines are really important. If you normally exercise or even if you don't, you should get out, get some vitamin D, go on that walk. Um, if you normally do it in the morning or if you do it, in, you know, in the afternoon, it doesn't matter, but you need to stay on some type of routine. Um, that's crucial. I heard some great messages on habits earlier this year. I did too. Did you hear those? Yes, Weren't they wonderful? They were great. They may <laughs> want to actually go back a little bit of shameless self-promotion right here in the middle of all this. You may want to go back and check those out on habits mm -hmm. so I can't stay in my pajamas all day. No, it's really ideal that everybody get dressed, brush your teeth. Um, like I said, do devotion, spend time with God. If you're working or um, homeschooling right now, um, you know, go ahead and get started on your day. Accomplish mm -hmm. those tasks. And then if you have free time, you know, you can do some other things uh, like reading or, or different therapies or different things like that. I think that's one of the things that's driving people crazy right now mm -hmm. is that our routines have been terribly interrupted. Yes. I mean, things that we don't even realize that we take for granted that we do through the week, we just lost sight of that. Yes. I mean, I'm struggling to figure out what today is. What's today? I, I mean, right. uh, what day every we day to? seems alike in some ways. Absolutely. And it's tough. Can we do this? If we have a Zoom meeting, can we wear pajamas and then dress <laughs> up down. up here? I've heard of people doing that. Is that okay or not? Uh, I mean, it's definitely more appropriate than being in pajamas or something else. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> but as far as structure goes, you need to go ahead and get fully dressed. <laughs> I think it's important. I really think you're... You're so right about that. I found it important to get up and to, you know, we're still coming into the office as essential, you know, to record and to do things like that that are essential, but so much time being spent at home. I got up the other day and I just got dressed, fully dressed, and, and my wife said, what are you doing? I said, I've just got to have shoes on. <laughs> if I don't have shoes on my feet, I'm not productive. So I'm getting up, shaving, uh, getting dressed just like I would for a normal day. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I mean, that's a home run for me. Mm -hmm. I think it, it's so important to me just to have that established routine. Yeah. I heard you say as well, like your body your body when you get out of sync and out of your routines right. it can have effect on your body and therefore your mind right so it really um, I won't go into the whole scientific uh, definition for all of that but it definitely messes with um, how your brain responds to things um, you know it can mess with your sleep cycle um, it can mess with your dopamine and serotonin and so uh, that coupled with exercise and that and connection is really what will help maintain um, your status quo so if you are normally you know um, a cheerful person you know that's what's going to help you stay cheerful in the midst of all this onslaught of, of 
um, people being scared and anxious right now. Um, if you already tend to be a little depressed or lonely, it's even more important for you to exercise and to have that structure so that you can break those cycles um, because you know with depression comes insomnia um, and then you end up napping and then you end up missing the whole day and it's just a snowball so that's why the structure is so very important for adults but also for kids we have kids that were so used to specific schedules and structures all day long at school or daycare and that's all gone now and so we have to provide that for them so that they can stay well I'm hearing some stories, I've heard some people mention how some children have some regression yes. back into some behaviors that yes. that you may have thought was over, but this time, is, this crazy time has just brought that back to the surface. Could you speak to that for a yeah, minute? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it, is that normal? Is that okay? normal. So this is a traumatic experience, right? So uh, while we aren't um, at war per se, right, you know, here at our front door, because this is so abnormal where kids can't get out, we're not supposed to leave our homes, um, this is trauma. And so um, it is perfectly normal for that 10 year old that has not had a tantrum in years to all of a sudden have a tantrum. Or that four or five or six year old to um, have some bedwetting or have some accidents um, because they don't know how to process it. And yeah. that's why the adults around them have to help them process it. But shoot, it's hard for us to process all of this as well. And so we just have to do our best to um, monitor, you know, what our activities are and what's coming and going out of our lives so that we can help them with that and have patience, give them extra grace. You know, it's yes. kind of like that old saying, like, don't yell at your toddler for spilling a cup of milk, right? right. The milk isn't what, it, what is important. The bedwetting or the tantrum isn't what's important. Yes, that's great. Would it be, I'm thinking it would be just as important or maybe even more important for the person who's alone right now. Absolutely. I could see, uh, those of you who are by yourself right now, it could be so easy for me, if that were me, to go into just a pit of despair. Mm -hmm. and, and there are times in my life when I'm struggling, I struggle sometimes with depression and routines help me mm -hmm. deal with that. So I think it'd be important for them as well. Yeah, and again, it goes back to what was life like before all of this, yeah. right? So if, if you do have a tendency for loneliness or depression, and normally you would see people throughout the day, normally you would call your friends or your parents or you know whoever you're close to, you need to do that now. So it's not um, enough to just make a phone call. If you have internet connection, it's best to see their face. So yeah. if it's Zoom or FaceTime or Skype, whatever um, you know, process it is, it's best to see their face so that you can see they truly are okay and you can have that um, connection mm -hmm. versus just the phone call. Now for some folks, they don't have a smartphone, they don't have um, internet, and so the phone is the best they can do and they need to continue to do that. Don't put it off, don't say, okay, I'll do it tomorrow. You, know, you need to have um, a schedule and call those people. Make a list, maybe, right. and say one of the items on my list that I'm going to do today is make three phone calls. Right. You've got to have interaction. Yeah. One of the things we're attempting to do, and I, I think we're doing a pretty good job about it at Upward, is calling people to make sure they're okay and staying in touch. I want to challenge all of you out there as well. If you know someone that lives alone, call them check on them regularly. We may need to do that. Some people may be sliding into a depression now and it's more important than ever that we check on them. So I want to challenge you to do that. That's really powerful. Kristen, tell us with your uh, all the kids at home and all, we haven't even mentioned Rob and, and dealing with him all the time. I love Rob, but oh gosh. Uh, what what are some routines you're, you guys are, are doing as a family? How, how are sure. you and Rob uh, handling the routines with all the kids now? Sure, so we do the typical, you know, we uh, get started in the morning and do schoolwork um, for our two oldest and do some for the preschool age um, kiddos. But then in the afternoon, um, a couple times a week, we're, doing, we're trying to focus outside of our house. So um, this week they painted bird houses and we're going to drop them off at a couple of different mailboxes. Um, they made cards for some folks that are living in assisted living facilities because um, it's important for them to still know there's a world beyond our house mm, that's um, good. because right now that's all they see. Um, we've limited screen time even more than before. So before they were only allowed to have it on the weekends. 
we've really cut that back even further just because it would be so easy to slide into um, you know, constant screen time to keep people entertained, um, but that just leads to uh, poor behavior choices. So we're getting outside as much as possible. They're on the trampoline. Um, and then at night, we're having focused family discussions. So um, we have found with our four rambunctious boys that any unstructured time can lead to chaos. So um, at night at dinner, we're having conversations about what was the best part of your day? What are you grateful for? And then last night, we just started with asking them, what do they like about each other? That was tricky. Uh, <laughs> that was tricky for them because they all kind of want to break from each other too. Um, but it's a good thing to keep helping them focus outside of themselves. That's great. Mm -hmm. I, I heard you say this. It would be so easy. Mm -hmm to go a certain direction. Yes. I think specifically you're referring to screen time. Yes. There's so many bad habits that would be easy to drift yes. into. And if you just, uh, I don't want to bring condemnation to anybody, but if you just let the, the screen be a babysitter, mm -hmm. then you're not really engaging that child. And that's such an issue. I don't think there's yeah. anything wrong with some screen time, but I think there are Well, even for us adults, right? That. Do you really need to binge like seven different TV series right now? No, that's not healthy for us either. No. So even for those folks that are home, you know, um, it's also so easy to do day drinking now, right? So even folks that um, would only have an occasional drink, um, you know, and maybe weren't an alcoholic or didn't have an issue, now they're home, what, they're not driving anywhere. It would be so easy to slip into addiction. Oh, yeah. Um, and so we have to constantly fight against what's easy and do what's best. So I, I hadn't thought of that really, but the folks who are already dealing with addictions, mm -hmm. those things are magnified. I Absolutely. guess you could say most problems uh, across our lives are magnified through this time. Yeah. Oh, what a challenge. So a routine becomes so important. It is. Man. So, so Peter told us to prepare our minds for action, and I think that's powerful. And we've we've come into some good uh, good learning here today on that. He also told us to uh, exercise self control. Oh, isn't that a need in, in this time, Kristen? When I when I say Peter said exercise self control, mm -hmm. what does that bring to your mind that we can share with these families today? Some practical ways to do that. Sure. Well, some of it is what we were just talking about, right? So. Maybe it's maybe you want to limit if your normal routine was two hours of TV, you know, an hour of the news and then a show that you like or whatever. You want to try to stick to that. Don't all of a sudden watch eight hours to binge through an entire series of something. Um, and then uh, drugs and alcohol, self-medicating, you know, we need to um, really provide structure with ourselves around that. But that isn't what's healthy and that's not what God wants for our lives. Yeah. Um, and then in addition to that is having grace for the people that we are in the house with. Um, you know, biting your tongue when that uh, behavior is getting a little bit on your nerves, taking a time out. Even if the time out is you go into the bathroom and lock the door for 10 minutes, you know, um, escape to the garage, <laughs> whatever it might be. This is how a mom with a household of kids does that. Just and they lock. are still knocking on that door. Kristen, but that come is out. My Kristen, out. come out. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know, uh, even you know, even without children, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, spouses are used to spending maybe half their time together. You right. know, so you're used to your work routine when you're apart, right. and then all of a sudden you're together with them all the time. Yes. If if you're feeling stressed about that, d does that mean that that you have a bad marriage? No, absolutely not. No. no. That is just, you know, um, you can have little pet peeves when you have no breaks, right? So little things can start annoying you, um, but you have to just remember that this is a season. We're all going to get through this. We won't all be stuck in the house for the rest of our lives. Um, and your spouse is doing the best that they can too. So you mean just because I love this person and have committed their life, my life <laughs> to them, it doesn't mean that I want to be with them 24 seven. Well, I'm sure Alexa would say that. <laughs> you didn't have to go there. I'm already in enough trouble. <laughs> I'm sure she would. Have you talked to her? <laughs> no. 
Uh, no, absolutely not. You know, God never designed us to be just around one person. He designed us for fellowship. You can't just fellowship with one person um, all the time. And so, no, it just means that this is a really difficult time to go through. And so you have to give yourself grace just as much as you give your um, spouse or if you're living with a roommate or, um, you know, your kids, whoever's in the house with you. Uh, there's a scripture that says, uh, make allowance for each other's yes, faults. Absolutely. Uh, I didn't write it down. I can't remember off the top of my head where it is, but it's the idea of understanding, okay, I'm around this person and they have faults, they have issues, they have things that, that tick me off, you know, but just to say, okay, we're together, bear with them, right. you know, right. uh, bite your tongue, mm -hmm. take a deep breath. Yes. Go hide in the bathroom for a yes. few minutes. <laughs> so Rob and I actually have um, almost this look that we give each other when one of us is out of turn. And um, so that is really what we've been um, trying to focus on. Um, because when you adopt a sibling group, um, you, you try to be extra careful about the words that come out of your mouth because they've already experienced trauma. So we don't want them to feel like we're mm. fighting or arguing mm. or, you know, anything that might um, be upsetting to them. So we give each other this look. That means you better get it together. Um, and we both get it. I mean, because nobody's perfect. This is hard. Do you want to show them what the look looks oh, like? Oh, I don't even think I could do it without him here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if he was here, you could do it. I'm sure. And he has a look as well. That's oh, yes, like, absolutely. That's enough. That's enough. That's pretty good, though. That's a <laughs> signal where you can say, okay, bud, you've pushed me to the limit. Right. And yeah. then we can talk about it later after the kids are in bed so that <laughs> they don't have to get involved in any of it. <laughs> That's a good thought. That yeah. really is. I love that. So so prepare your minds for action. Exercise self-control. It's, it's just, uh, those are powerful, powerful prescriptions, I think, for this time. There's also been, Kristen, as I've heard, and I'm sure you're dealing with uh, in your ministry, your work, there's been a rise in domestic violence yes. in, in this time. I'm hearing that from law enforcement and yes. from other ministries like yours. Um, you're seeing that, I know. Um, what, what would you say to people right now? They, they say, I heard it the other day, stay safe at home, and that's a good statement, great statement, and we all should abide by that. But yeah. It struck me that for some people, home is not a safe place. Right. There are some spouses that are in abusive situations right now, mm -hmm. and there's some children, sadly, yes. that are at home with parents who are, you know, less than what they need to be. And um, what would you say to those folks right now? If someone's listening and their home is not a safe place for them right now, yeah. what um, can you share? You know, if they're an adult, whether it's a man or a woman that's being abused, get out. There are great resources. There is no reason to stay home um, if you're being abused. Um, God doesn't intend that. Um, it speaks Amen. nothing to his character. Um, get out, seek safety immediately. And we have great community partners that can help with that. Um, I think now it's really important for neighbors to pay attention. Um, kids can't do that. Kids can't get out. Um, right. And so, you know, they aren't seeing teachers or the people that typically could throw up those red flags, but most people have neighbors. So neighbors paying attention. It doesn't mean you need to all of a sudden become nosy Nelly, you know, but if you happen to see that kid with um, bruises or you happen to see that um, something's just different and you get that inner gut feeling that something's wrong, um, Child Protection Services is still, they are essential workers. They are still working around the clock and it does no harm to call in something and let them do the investigating. We're not called to investigate, but that's their job to do that. So if someone were to see that, yes. so the signs would be bruises. bruises. Are there other signs sure. that come bruises, to mind? Bruises, um, you know, something that looks like neglect, like they always look dirty or unkempt. Um, if they look really hungry, um, if you know that um, that they don't have resources, and, and for sure if, some, if a child tells you something. Um, so those are some of the signs that you can look for. Um, or maybe you're just hearing yelling all the time, um, or you hear really loud noises. Again, you know, it's not to get people in trouble being, um, you know, nosy um, with their neighbors, but these are times that um, it's more important to make the call and have it investigated than to not and something terrible happen to that child. Yes, absolutely. It has broken my heart over the years that many times I've talked with, uh, it's been more women who've come and said I was in an abusive relationship and uh, 
I went to my church for help. Mm -hmm. And the answer they got was, you have to stay there. Yeah. And I think as churches, we need to understand that we, we stand up for the sanctity and the holiness of marriage and the permanence of marriage. Right. We believe it's to be eternal. But that does not mean that you need to stay in a situation where you're being abused again and again. It may be that the answer to the marriage is getting away and giving that spouse a wake-up call and getting them the help that they need so you can have a lasting marriage. So I think that's very powerful what you said there. I love the last point that Peter uh, brought to us. He told us to put all our hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus is revealed to the world. He's saying essentially, put all our hope in Jesus Christ. I know beyond your professional training in your ministry that you're a Christian at heart, you know, and uh, you've adopted four children at once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think our audience is wanting to ask a question now to you <laughs> is what in the world are you thinking? Yeah, I That's asked, the question yeah. I'm asking and sure. I'm, I know you and Rob to be reasonable, <laughs> sane people and there are people saying, what in the world are they doing? <laughs> that has to be Jesus. Absolutely. Yeah, um, you know, uh, Rob felt very strongly initially, and I talked to my mentors and, and my best friends about it um, because I was much more hesitant. I was worried about, you know, was I enough um, to do that? How in the world could God call us to go from a family of three to a family of seven within That's one? That's a leap. Yes, within one month. How, you know, and Joe's got the energy for three by himself. It, absolutely, he does. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, but I keep uh, being reminded that God doesn't call you to something He won't equip you for. So That's while good. you know nobody would have wanted this social distancing and um, quarantine time, and nobody would have wanted some of the situations that they're living in. Um, he will bring you through it. He will give you the strength that you need. He'll give you enough sleep even when you don't think you have enough sleep. He will give you um, food. You know, he'll take care of all those needs um, and, and equip you for what he's brought you to. One of the things that um, God has just been doing here in our congregation again and again is getting people involved in fostering mm -hmm. children. I've seen we have a uh, a connect group that's mm -hmm. just foster parents, you know, that come together on a regular basis and share with each other, and we just see that going on. I think, in fact, the uh, the uh, some of the classes for foster potential foster parents yes. are happening. They're using the church for those classes, so we're so glad to be involved in assisting that ministry. Uh, what would you say to a parent out there, or maybe an empty nester, or maybe somebody who might sure. be considering? fostering a child. I mean, what, what would you say to them? Goodness, if God has uh, you considering it, then I would say you need to take a step. Um, you know, it's sort of one of those things where you have some people that have a really big heart for it um, and others that are kind of scared to do it, sort of like a missions field, right? Uh, some people might think, oh, I, I, I can't do an overseas trip. You know, but then God can change them so dramatically through it if they'll just take that first step of faith. Um, and so certainly reaching out to the church, the church can definitely connect them to um, a couple of the wonderful local agencies that we have um, just to get the information. You know, you can be a respite worker where you just take kids on the weekends or at nights or when somebody goes on vacation just to give um, the regular foster family some breaks some respite, um, you could certainly be a foster parent and feed into the lives of these kids. You might be the only time they hear about Jesus in their entire childhood. Um, and what a wonderful, um, you know, place in their life that would hold. And then others like us, I mean, God called us to start the foster care journey and then bam, adopt. Um, that wasn't necessarily what we set out to do. Um, and so we're their forever home now, you know, and they will forever know about Jesus and um, have love and care. And so, you know, there's a place for anybody that's thinking about that. Uh, there has to be time in this journey already that you're taking that you said, God, I cannot do this. Mm -hmm. Have you faced that already? <laughs> sure. <laughs> what, what do you do with that? It's one step at a time, just like any difficult time in your life. Um, you know, there are times when we have all five unhappy, 
what, what do you what do you do with that, right? So, you know, he's... And probably one of the spouses is unhappy <laughs> with him, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> or both. Or we're just looking at each other, <laughs> taking deep breaths, yeah. You know, this is a time um, that we're really connecting to resources, you know. Um, so while God is equipping us to be their parents, God is not equipping us to um, heal all trauma, right? Or heal all the things that have happened in their life. And so a piece of that, taking one step at a time, is getting them the help that they need. So we have one in speech therapy, one in occupational therapy, several in um, mental health therapy, because this is a huge transition. Can you imagine at the age of four and six, not knowing who your forever family was gonna be? I can't imagine that as an adult. And so that is a lot to process, even if nothing else had happened. Um, and so it's just one step, um, you know, keeping that routine, just one step at a time, taking deep breaths, praying a ton, and then the next day is usually better. I've always had to come back to moments like that in my own life where uh, I just felt like, you know, I just can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. I just can't fulfill this role or calling or whatever it is. I've had to come back to those with God and just say, you know, God, you called me to this. Right. And, and I'm just putting my trust in you for this. You're, you're the one who can do it. I think that's part of what Peter is saying by putting all our trust in Jesus. Right. And uh, you just have to come back and say, I'm, I'm living for you, doing the best I can. The results yeah. are yours. It's the things that don't make human sense. Yep. You know, and that's yep. why we have to put our trust in him because he has already seen it. He already knows, you know, what our kids are going to be when they grow up. Yep. You know, he already knows when they're going to come to Christ. Um, he already knows all of that, and so we have to, um, and this is hard for type A planner right here, I am not in control of that. I'm not in control of all behaviors or if everybody gets along, um, you know, but I am in control of keeping everybody safe and pointing them to Jesus and to Scripture. That is what I'm in control of. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, Christian, you're a hero. You are that. a hero. <laughs> you're ministering to a large family that God has given you, mm -hmm. and you're doing incredible work in our community and here at Upward Christian Fellowship, and we just want to thank you for oh, taking the time you. today. I want to say to the folks here today, um, take this to heart. Uh, prepare your mind for action. Exercise self-control. Put your hope in Jesus Christ. Nobody still knows what's going to happen. We don't know the time frames. We don't uh, fully understand everything that's going on around us, but we, we know who lives within us, and that's Jesus, and we can completely put our trust in Him. I want to invite you today, if you're listening and uh, you've never made a decision to serve Jesus and to give your life to Him, that's the, the biggest step you can make today is just to say yes to Jesus Christ. You may, be, you may have been turned off to religion, and so have I. You may have been hurt in church, and so have I. I had to get past some church stuff in my life to find Jesus, and thankfully Jesus cut through all that and revealed himself to me. And my prayer is that through this conversation today, you've caught more than just things in your mind, that you've caught the heart of Jesus in your heart. And I believe the Holy Spirit works through these times to speak to us and to speak to you. And if the Holy Spirit's tugging at your heart right now, saying it's time for you to say yes to Jesus, I want you just to acknowledge that right now in your own heart. Acknowledge it to yourself. Uh, there's a way you can contact us, either a button on the screen, or you can mention it in the chat, or reach out to us and let us know if that's your decision today. But if you're right there and you're making a decision today to say yes to Christ, I want to pray with you right now. And I just invite you to pray this prayer with me in your heart. Lord Jesus, I come to you today surrendering my life to you. I recognize the path that my life has taken and I turn from that path to a new life with you. I ask your forgiveness of my sins. I ask you to come into my heart as my Savior and Lord. And from this day forward, I will walk with you and live with you as you enable me to. I will serve you. I thank you, Jesus, for today dying for me for paying the price for my sin, and I surrender everything to you today in your name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today out of your heart, Jesus heard that prayer. He forgave your sin, and he came into your heart, and I want you to know that's very real. We'd like to know about that. 
please reach out to us and let us know that that's been your decision and we will support you in that. So again, thanks to Kristen. Thank you all for being a part of this today. Uh, we're praying for you going forward. We're going to make it through this together. Be filled with God's hope. Love you all.